Hello everybody. So, what do climbing gloves, swarms of robotic drones, and hoverbikes all have in common? Well, aside from being on my Christmas list, they also all feature in the upcoming Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. But just how plausible are these three bits of future war technology? War. War never changes. Except when it does. I mean, I'm no historian, but I'm pretty sure the ancient Romans didn't conquer Europe with the aid of aerial drones. But who knows, right? My point is, though, that while that fallout Ron Perlman quote beautifully illustrates mankind's unwavering appetite to be continually shitty to one another, the technology used in these conflicts changes, and it does so at an incredible rate. And this is something that didn't go unnoticed by Sledgehammer Games when developing the tech and weaponry in advanced warfare. In fact, to quote design lead Glenn Schofield, The future tech in the game is actually based on technology that we see today, and we've taken it further. That's one of the things about Call of Duty. It's got to be relatable, got to be believable. But we are taking it to an extent that makes it also fun and new. Now, one piece of tech which I spied in the campaign trailers is a stylish pair of climbing gloves, which enable the wearer to nimbly scale a surface. Pretty handy, right? <laughs> now, while this may sound like the pipe dream of so many wannabe man spiders, this technology might actually be closer to reality than you think. Meet Gekskin, inspired by this little guy. Geckos truly are climbing masters, or about 60% of gecko species are anyway. They are able to scale almost any surface thanks to the adhesive sticky pads on their feet. So how do they do it? Well, it's not using a sticky glue or anything like that. The key is actually millions of microscopic hairs, or setae. Each of these also branches out again into yet more tiny projections called spatulae, which stick to surfaces by taking advantage of the tiny attractive forces between molecules. And these are known as van der Waals forces. Now, while the force between the molecules making up the spatulae and the molecules of the climbing surface are very weak, because there are just so many points of contact, the sum of all these forces adds up, allowing the gecko's foot to successfully adhere to the surface and easily support its own body weight. Now, Gekskin, which is the product of a team at the University of Massachusetts Amherst backed by DARPA, is basically a synthetic, upscaled version of this. And you know what? So far, the results are pretty impressive. One pad alone can hold up to 700 pounds, that's around 317 kilograms in weight, and is then easily detached with a simple twist of the pad, and can be used again and again. Pretty amazing. Also, the latest iteration of Gekskin was recently demoed by having a 218 pound researcher saddled with 50 pounds of recording gear climb a 25 foot glass wall using just two of these climbing paddles. All we need to do now is to take these paddles and convert them into a pair of wearable gloves. Oh, and uh, a consumer model too, please, thanks. I think this is some really exciting technology. One of my defining memories of E3 2014 was this moment in the Call of Duty gameplay demo. Watching those drones swarm is pretty haunting. But would it ever be possible to actually create drones that could do that? Well, drones that are used in combat today are generally much bigger and look more like planes than quadcopters. Plus, they tend to operate solo and they certainly aren't capable of swarming. But the idea of colonies of fairly simple individuals swarming is obviously something we've all seen before in nature. Fish, locusts, even tiny ants are able to exhibit complex group behavior far beyond the apparent sum of their parts. So is this collective motion of a large number of self-propelled entities possible with robots? Behold, the 1,000 strong robotic swarm. Okay, granted, they're not really that scary. After all, each one's just about the size of a penny. They don't even have proper legs. All they can do is vibrate upon their three tiny wee toothpick-like supports. This does enable them to move, however, and move they do into a whole variety of shapes. They receive instructions via infrared signals from above and they then go about assembling themselves into the desired shape. Check out this video from New Scientist to see the process in action and get more detail on precisely how this is achieved. Needless to say, this doesn't fill me with quite the same dread as the drones in Call of Duty. 
But we should maybe consider this a rather adorable first step towards our eventual demise at the hands of a swarm of rampaging killbots. Hoverbikes. Man, I would totally ride a hoverbike. And it looks like you will be able to in Advanced Warfare. But thinking about it, having a hoverbike sure would be quite the asset in a war zone. Quick and nimble on almost any terrain, they would be ideal for swift infiltration and extraction, and excellent at avoiding landmines and other traps. So are these actually possible? Well, yes. In fact, you could order one right now. Just don't expect delivery till 2017. So what would eventually wind up in your mailbox? Well, one of these guys, an Aerofex hoverbike from company AeroX. These petrol-powered machines can fly up to 13 meters off the ground and can reach speeds of 45 miles per hour. There's even room for two people atop the thing and it has an operating time of 90 minutes on a single tank. Plus, they're designed to handle much like a motorbike, so in theory, you wouldn't even need a pilot's license to take to the air on one of these. Now, Airfix is definitely pretty cool, but for me, it's not as exciting as this next model. This British design machine, known simply as the Hoverbike, is more of a drone bike hybrid and demonstrates a leap forward in drone technology. Now, before you ask, no, that's not a horribly pale British child riding that bike. It's a one third size proof of concept for this. Made to carry a person, this Hoverbike is designed to fly a lot higher than the Aero X, as high as 9,000 feet in fact, and at a speed of up to 100 knots. According to the design team, because you're actually much further away from the ground and therefore any potential crashing hazards, you're actually a lot safer than in lower altitude models, which I guess is true, providing you don't, you know, fall off. I doubt you get away with flying this without a pilot's license though, but I can definitely imagine a squad of future soldiers riding something like this into the battlegrounds of the future. So tell me, which one of these three bits of future technology is your favourite? And which one do you think the soldiers of the future might get their mitts on or in first? Let me know in the comments. Now, if you want to find out more about any of the science and technology in this episode, I'm trying out a new site to help you do just that. So just follow the link on screen now or the one in the description on YouTube and it will bring you to a page I've created on the site Biblio. There you'll find a collection of all the resources I used when researching and writing this episode. You'll find both text and video there, so go nuts, have a look and make sure that I didn't make anything up. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. See you next week.